He just bought five of the rarest coins. Sally told me you were here. There's something I gotta tell you. What's that? I was pretty upset when you went to the slammer. <laughs> well, how do you think I felt about it? Hey, stop that. I'm being serious. Yeah, I know you are. And I do appreciate it. How did you know Mrs. Gray wasn't guilty? I don't really know. Uh... You know, I never knew anyone who had absolutely no defense at all like that. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain, really. Uh, Rita, look, you know how I am about filing. Now, I've got to find one here on a guy named Amos Dalton. The file should be about 11 years old. Will you find it for me? <sighs> sure. Thank you. <sighs> Where will you be when I find it? Home. <laughs> Secret, secure the terminal. Yes, sir. I'll help you to a seat. Secure the terminal now. Oh, well. Oh, hello, Mr. Jameson. Yeah, I know where he is. I'll call him right away. Yes, sir. Hello, Peter? Rita. The airport's been quarantined. People got word of the quarantine on the press wire, but this is not a crisis. We have placed one terminal in quarantine because a passenger may, and underline may, have come in contact with a communicable disease. Now, this is just a precautionary measure to determine if, in fact, there is any danger, if anyone has been exposed. Well, can you identify the disease and tell us the flight's origin? No, I'm sorry. Well, how long will the quarantine last? I don't know. How many people were on the plane? The health department officer in charge will be able to answer all of those questions just as soon as he finishes his work. Oh, Peter, I'm sorry. Julie, how come you're only a klutz when I'm taking a picture? If the whole airport is quarantined, why can't we go down and meet the passengers as they're released? Right, why do we have to stay up here? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sorry for the inconvenience, but we do not want to create a panic. The situation will be resolved in a few minutes, and I have to ask you to please remain here. You'd think we had the plague. Mm -hmm. First time I've ever been locked in an airport before. Why didn't the guy give us more information? The whole thing doesn't wash. Got anything, Julie? Nothing much. The place is crawling with security. Madrid via London is now in its fine sporting stages at 87. Passengers for flight no. 10 to Where you going? Chris has got to be behind the rope. Oh, yes, I realize that, but that's Jim McGann of the FBI. I know him. He wants to talk to me. Okay, Jim, what's going on here? 
Peter, you're supposed Excuse to... Excuse me, are you with the health department? Oh, I don't believe Peter, we've met before. No sir. comment. Well, perhaps you could comment. What is your name, sir? Peter, I said no comment. All right, let's go. What was that? Peter Parker, reporter from the Bugle. Hey, Jim! you get out there? In a coach pulled by 12 mice. Funny. is probably long gone by now. Well, I'll open the terminal and we'll keep some heavy security on for a while in the area, just in case. From London, gate four. Flight 30, now arriving to London. When you're not being a klutz, you're really very nice. When I'm not being a klutz? Truth? No, I don't trust you. Hey, that hurts me. It really does. Peter, I don't think that's at all fair. Since when have you ever been fair? Well, it'll be different from now on. See, I, I had to prove myself. You know, small town girl in the big city, on trial, needing a job. <laughs> you understand. I do, and nothing has changed. Look, the jokes and the flip talk, the competing, I mean, that's part of me, but not the most important part. It's what I see and what I hear. I'm not tough, really. I'm not manipulating. I'm not self-sufficient. Oh, so actually, you are just kind of a cream puff, huh? You've got to believe me. It matters. I guess I kind of need you to like me. I do. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I have good news. The incident is over, and it was no crisis. What do you mean? I mean the passenger we were worried about turned out to have a bad cold. Nothing serious. Again, I'd like to apologize for the inconvenience, and thank you very much for your cooperation. You believe him. Like I said, it doesn't wash. You quarantine the whole airport because the guy has a cold? Okay, I'll see you later. Okay. telling me what's going on. Would you prefer no comment or a lie? The FBI doesn't get involved in a quarantine, and that guy in there is no help to our official. Now, what's happening? You're wasting time, Peter. Forget it. That's the girl who took the photograph of me. Stay with her. in the end. 
Rapax lot. Do you need a Rapax town? No, thanks. My bike's there, too. doing with McGann at the airport? Well, how should I know? He didn't want to be identified, but he was giving orders. Now, why would the State Department and the FBI both be involved in a simple quarantine case? Have you tried the health department? Mm-hmm. And they back up McGann. But Rita has a friend she called at the department, and they have never heard of any quarantine. Well, you may be right. There isn't much to go on. Add the fact that Julie Masters' camera was stolen and then thrown away after the film was removed. Now, somebody was very, very anxious not to have their picture taken. Government people? Well, I don't know, but clearly the government was involved. I've got some connections to the State Department. I'll call them, see what I can find out. I'll get out of here. Hey, Pete. Thelma Lance at Julie's, and her editor doesn't know where she is. Terrific. So, uh, what about the quarantine at the airport that everybody's pretending didn't happen? Mr. Jameson is letting me dig into it. Oh, that's great. Hmm. That's not great? 
Well, yeah, it is, but... Listen, Pete, he has to pay you more money if you write the story. And even if he pays you the string array, why, you could get as much as... Yeah, I, I, I know all that, Rita, but... But what? Listen, you can always use some extra bread. You borrowed ten bucks from me yesterday. And now that you're about to get a double paycheck this week, you are decidedly gloomy. It's just that I'm worried about Julie. Words out that that lady can take care of herself. Not against guys like the one that stole her camera. Okay, we shall see you later. Well, where are you going in case Mr. J wants to reach you? I'm going to hang out at Julie's apartment in case she shows up. Oh. What? You are the slow one. I'll tell you that. Rita, cut it out, would you? Me? Listen, Pete, she works for the competition. That means you are supposed to compete with her. You see, not aid and comfort her. She's the enemy, remember? Just keep trying to find her, will you? I have the NATO defense plans. Price? Two million dollars. Of course I remember my original proposal where money is involved. I never forget. I raised the price because the documents are more valuable than I thought. I don't like delays. You trying to stall? I get verification from your government and arrange to have the money delivered by Tuesday. If you can make it any sooner, so much the better. Keep in touch with my office. Tuesday. Waiting around could be dangerous, but we have no choice if we want top price. We we'll stay on the cover. I developed it, but it's new film. It's never been exposed. There's nothing on it. Now wait a minute. That's the film I took out of the camera. Maybe she didn't take a picture. Maybe she just. I saw that woman take that picture. Now, we are sitting ducks on two million dollars worth of NATO defense plans if anybody sees that photograph. Does the girl who took it know you? What difference does that make? The State Department people and the FBI know me. What if they see those pictures? Now, we can assume that this woman is a photographer for a metropolitan newspaper. Find out who she is, where she lives, where she works. I want the negatives and the prints that might have been made from them. The negatives and the prints. No mistakes this time. No excuses. Right. Rita, call the State Department. Get me Mike Callahan. See if he can put me in touch with uh, Arnold Evans. Okay, I'll try to reach him at... Uh... Mr. Jameson, when would you like to see Mr. Evans? What do you mean, when? I want to see him as soon as possible. Walked in to see him, Mr. Jameson, when your secretary said you were trying to reach me. Yes, it was. Sit down. What do you say to that? It's not very flattering. Don't hand me that fairy tale about the quarantine at the airport. I won't. You're not going to convince me that you and McGann were prowling around the airport just because some incoming passenger had a slight cold. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. What do you mean I won't? Some enormously valuable and embarrassing documents were stolen from a courier at the airport. We closed things down as fast as we could, but we were too late. They got away. But you're right. The quarantine was a cover story. My man Parker saw through that story. Well, I thought he might. That's why I'm here. I do hope, sir, you're going to put a muzzle on Mr. Parker. You're asking me to kill a page one story. That's right. That sounds like an attempted cover-up of some bureaucratic mess. Oh, it's a mess. And we do want to cover it up. But it's not bureaucracy. This is national security. The standard excuse. That's right. But this time, it's more than just an excuse. This time, it is a very real crisis. And we do need your cooperation. All right, you've got it. Thank you. Please keep this discussion strictly confidential. We're contacting the police and other possibly involved persons. They're to keep hands off. We can't risk anyone but police and the FBI getting near this case. I give you my word. If we go public, your paper will get the beat.
nothing. No sign of the girl. What about the negative in prints? Over. Got them. I'm going to burn these and then check around and make sure there aren't any others. You had company while you were out, ma'am. This guy, a two-bit burglar. Two bits is about all he could get in my apartment. These creeps will grab anything they can sell to a fence. You wouldn't believe what they'll steal. Murphy, this is a pad. Will you let her in? Hi, Julie. I'm afraid there's been an attempted burglary. I know. I saw your men outside. I don't think they got away with anything, but you better take a look around. Sofa, chair, plant. I could check the cupboard and see if the pancake flour is still there. Terrific. I've lived here three days, and already I'm ripped off. What are you doing here? I was just driving by. What's happening? Some guy just ripped off my plate. You're kidding. Well, did they take... Did they take a lot of stuff? I don't think so. Julie, do you think maybe what? I... Hmm? Oh. This is Peter Parker. He works for the Bugle. <laughs> we know each other. Lieutenant uh, Murphy. Come on. on. Is this walkie-talkie yours? I never saw it before. It's unusual. A cheap rip-off artist doesn't stay in touch with an outside man. Maybe I just attract a better class of burglar. Excuse me, what are these ashes here? Uh, it looks like burned photographs. Or melted film. I didn't burn anything. Did you have any pictures in here that anybody might want destroyed? I can't imagine what. Why would this guy take time to set a fire? Are you sure there isn't something embarrassing or incriminating? Mm-mm. -mm. Wait a minute. This morning at the airport, you were taking pictures. Have you developed them yet? Yes, and made a proof sheet. But they weren't important or significant. Hmm. The negative and the sheet are gone. I guess that's what's left. Were you one of the reporters covering the airport quarantine? Yes. Uh, like you say, it's probably nothing. Just some kook. It's a kick out of setting fires. Well, no. Wait a minute, Lieutenant. You said yourself that the use of a walkie-talkie is very unusual. I mean, there's more to it than that. You see, these pictures were taken at the airport. Now, Julie's camera was also stolen at the airport. The FBI was involved, and so was the State Department. Don't you see? It all fits. 
everything is connected to the airport. On top of that, Peter, I... the airport is out of my jurisdiction. I don't know anything about it. Well, yeah, I know that, but... Well, I, I just thought maybe you could check it out. Yeah. I'll touch base with the detectives. Don't hold your breath. Julie, you'll get this back after the trial. Ciao. Notice something kind of strange about Martinez when I mentioned the airport. Yeah, he really lost interest. No, oh, I don't think so. I think he gained interest and was covering it up. Why? I don't know. Let's just say I've got a hunch, and if I'm right, you could be in a lot of trouble. That's ridiculous. Look, why did they steal your camera? Why did somebody break By in the here way, and turn your... How did you know my camera was stolen? You weren't with me. told me about it at the airport. Yeah, well, it still doesn't mean I'm in danger. Julie, the man who stole your camera wasn't a thief. He threw it away. What he wanted was the film. Mm, could be. The police found the empty camera and returned it to me. Okay, then you just stay put until I figure this whole thing out. Now, look, Peter, if you think just I'm Don't let anybody in this apartment that you don't know. Nobody is going to hurt me. You've been taking panic pills. You've been taking stubborn pills. Goodbye, Peter. Are you absolutely sure that there was nothing on that burned-out film that anybody else nothing. might Nothing! Shots of the airport manager, the plane on the ground, one of the guards. Who care about any of that? Goodbye again, Peter. I tell you, Carl guaranteed the film was burned. Are you afraid the police will make Carl talk? Well, the worst that can happen is that he'll be sentenced to a few months in jail, and after that, well, he'll collect a half a million dollars for keeping his mouth shut. That's a girl. The girl who took the photograph of me. She saw me. But she doesn't have the picture anymore. She saw me. She knew I was there. The authorities have a look at the mug books. She'll find me and identify me. She will not identify you. of a rival photographer are not my concern, and they shouldn't be yours. Let the register handle it. I've got another assignment for you. Earlier today, you agreed that I should cover this story. What happened to change your mind? I followed through on the airport situation with my contacts. The authorities are handling the matter. In the meantime, you're going to cover the opening of the flower show. You've got to be joking. Yes? Telephone call for Peter. Since when does he get calls on my phone? Oh, that's all right. I'll take it. Hello? I just wanted to tell you that I stopped taking stubborn pills. Julie, what's happened? I think somebody tried to break in. Look, don't take any chances. Just call the police. I have. They're on their way. I just wanted to apologize to you. Oh, uh, uh, they're here now. Everything is okay. All right. Take care. Another attempted break-in at Julie's. Now, do you believe me, or do you need an affidavit? I don't care. I want you to get over to that flower show. Okay, just as soon as I can. But for now, I'm going to Julie's, just to make sure everything's all right. 
I don't pay you to go to Julie's. I've checked everything, Julie. There's no sign of a prowler. I didn't just imagine somebody tried to break in here. Well, I didn't think you would. But, uh... Whoever it was had a chance to leave before I got here. Great. What do I do now? Wait for him to come back? Well, we're hoping he doesn't, but you can always call us back again. The only thing is, I, I'm afraid I just can't stay here. I understand. I'll take another look around outside before I leave. You make sure you keep your door locked? Thanks. Murphy, come on! Death, please. Could, but what if you have some friends who come in while I'm gone? Oh, good point. Look, I'm grateful. I'm also kind of at a loss for words. I, I mean, I know you're Spider-Man, but being face-to-face -face sort of blows my mind. Just make sure that after I'm gone, all your windows are locked as well as your door. I can't spend my whole life locked up in here. If you don't stay in here, you may not have much more life. Uh, I can't even get in touch with anyone. The phone is dead. It'll be fixed. Well, thanks. For what it's worth, I'm too scared not to be careful. <laughs> Away. I don't pay you to call me with excuses. But I couldn't help it. Spider-Man stopped me. If you can't handle a job, hire someone to help you. But I want that girl taken care of. Okay. Who's there? Peter. Are you alone? Yeah, I left the butler downstairs with my footman and chauffeur. Want to know something? I'm really glad to see you. Oh, Want to know something? I'm glad to hear that. But, Julie, you're trembling. Oh, some character came in through the window and grabbed me before I knew what was happening. Then Spider-Man shows up out of nowhere and scares them off. Really? Yeah, well, the question is, what do I do now? Well, what we've got to try to do is figure out who is trying to get to you and why. I've tried. Okay. Let's start with what we know. Now, it figures that somebody wants a picture that you took, most likely from the airport. You must have taken a picture of the man who's after you. 
I told you, the only pictures I took at the airport were of the plane that was quarantined, the airport manager... Hey, the guard! What guard? All right, this sounds crazy, but when you shoved my arm, I, I took a picture of a guard, and he didn't seem to want to have his picture taken. Suppose he really wasn't a guard. Yeah. Yeah, that could be, but you don't have the picture anymore. Do you remember what he looks like? I think so. Well, let's go back to the airport and look for him. No. If he was a phony, he wouldn't still be at the airport. No, probably not. But we could go down to the newspaper morgue and buzz through some mug shots. Maybe you'll spot it. Okay. Now, look, if we don't get a lead on this character, you have got to hold up here. If I wasn't so scared, I'd argue with you. I don't believe it. For once, we agree. to make a move. I don't know, a ransom note or something. That's customary procedure. But this case is different. Government agencies have been involved in a cover-up right from the start. Now, you've got enough muscle to get to the bottom of this. You've got to help Julie. I don't have that much muscle. Mr. Jameson, a girl's life is at stake. The government has put on the clamps. I was approached by the State Department and asked to keep this very quiet. National security. The FBI is carrying the ball. They're looking out for government interests. I'm looking out for Julie. Well, obviously, all the agencies will try to help a kidnap victim. Oh, yeah, so long as it doesn't interfere with national security. If you've got any information, I'll pass it along to the FBI. No, I told the police everything I know. <laughs> then we're stymied. No, wait. There's, there's one lead. There's one lead that we haven't followed yet. Huh? What's that? The guy in jail. The guy who broke into Julie's. The police questioned him for hours. They got absolutely nothing on him. That's right, so why keep him there? Are you suggesting that any criminal who refuses to talk should be released from jail? What if the Bugle were to put up his bail money? Oh, that's ridiculous. It's our only chance. If he's out of jail, I'll follow him and maybe he'll lead me to Julie. The Bugle's not about to throw away $5,000 on some criminal who'll undoubtedly jump bail. He'll figure out he's being released so he can be followed. He'll lose you and refuse to go near any of his associates. But Julie has been kidnapped. She could be killed. But call her paper. Let them put up the bail. And maybe get a beat on the story if the kidnappers are captured. Well, I guess my better judgment. Give me the accounting department.
72. Very good news. As you know, I was unhappy about having to wait until Tuesday. I can deliver the papers this afternoon, if you have the money ready. Wonderful. I'll see you in an hour. We're clearing out. Check the apartment, make sure there's nothing there to connect us. What about her? She could identify us. A situation you'll have to correct. Right. You put it up, didn't you? No, you were set up. Set up by who? Well, you followed. No, I was careful. Of course you were followed. Why else would they let you out? No chance. I was real careful to see that nobody followed me. In fact, I wore this. Nobody would know me. Oh, I'm not even going to talk to you. Get rid of her. We're clearing out fast. <laughs> of the Empire State Building. Tell the police there's a kidnapping in progress. Thanks. Please get me loose before any newspaper men show up. I've got to get my camera. Hey, what are you doing? I need the pictures. Okay. Here, I'll take these off your feet. There, you should be all right now. Oh, wait, finish up. Here come the Marines. You'll be all right. Absolutely sensational. 
sensational. This is page one. I don't know how you did it. Well, to tell you the truth, Spider-Man took that picture and he gave it to, to me. I don't care who took it as long as we can use it. The great job. As a matter of fact, if it hadn't been for Spider-Man... Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm only interested in the end results. On the other hand, are you trying to tell me that you couldn't do your job if it weren't for Spider-Man's help? <laughs> Why am I paying you? For pictures, Mr. Jameson. Just like the one you have right here in your hand. Right, Pete? Right. right. Oh. Man, you left yourself wide open in there. A few more seconds, Jameson would figure out some questions you might not want to answer. Like what? Oh, I don't know. Would you like me to try and think of some? 